In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then the serpent said to the woman, You shall not die by death, for God knows in the day you eat In the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like gods, knowing good and evil. According to Genesis, this is how the serpent, the devil, tempted humanity. If you eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, you'll become like gods, knowing good and evil. Now God has created us according to the same book of Genesis. God reveals from before this that we were created in his image and likeness. We were created to become like God. But then the devil comes to humanity and tells humanity, forget about God. To become like God. Eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and you'll become gods. Hebrew experts are saying that a better translation of that expression good and evil is power and control. What the devil tempted us with was to eat from the tree of power and control. Now, when we think about this, from what I'm seeing, humanity is eating more and more from the tree of power and control and trying to become God, trying to become gods without God. From what I'm seeing, from before conception, To death, humanity is trying to take hold of every aspect of life. Is that not true? We are eating more and more of the tree of power and control, and we try to control everything about our existence and about the creation of God from preconception to death. But in today's gospel, providentially, God reveals to us again that life and death belong to God. After very clearly revealing this to humanity in the Old Testament, in Leviticus, when God gave you know, very clear prescriptions about blood and how When a woman has her issue of blood, she is to be cleansed, not because she is sinful. That's a misconception. But because she had to deal with something that belongs to God. She had to deal with an issue of blood that is capable of giving life. Not only that, it was not only about the woman during her period, it was also about any kind of blood. Now, modern science, after thousands of years, comes to reveal to us that indeed there is something special about blood. And there is life in blood. And that blood has cells with memory. And we should not fool around, you know, with blood because we could get infested. So this this is what God revealed for thousands thousands of years before science came to the same conclusion. So, in today's Gospel, we see our Lord Jesus Christ being approached by the ruler of a synagogue in Capernaum, whose daughter was dying. At the same time, as going to the, while going to the house of Jairus, a woman came from behind, a woman who had had an issue of blood for 12 years without stopping, came from behind 
and she touched Jesus' garment and she was healed. Now these two events, of course, it was not an accident that they happened on the same day at the same time and they are related in the gospel together. Because one is about an issue of blood. One is about life in the blood for conception. The other event is about death. The girl died. And the Lord goes and resurrects the girl. When we put the two events together, what is God revealing? Again, in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is true God from true God, God came to earth to reveal to us once again that life from preconception to death belonged to Him. And He is the master of, of life and death. What is happening currently in humanity is very dangerous. We are playing with fire. And God has told us from the beginning, do not eat from the tree of knowledge. <laughs> do not eat from the tree of power and control because on the day when you do it, you will die. Now guess what? Humanity did not die right away, but it started to die. And the other consequence, according to the book of Genesis, is when you do this, when you are trying to have power and control everything, everything will turn against you. If this is not the story of humanity, I don't know what else is the story of humanity. We've been trying for millennia to twinkle and control everything because we think that we have knowledge and we know what we are doing. Recently, I heard that in Australia, they want to kill I don't know how many wild horses because they think they have too many wild horses. Here in the U.S., we kill the wolves because, you know, we don't like the wolves. Now, guess what? We have too many deer. Okay, we have a solution. We're going to kill the deer. <laughs> we know what we are doing. Don't we see once and for all that is not working? That we are creating bigger and bigger imbalances by eating from the tree of power and control? More recently, humanity has decided to even produce human life in the lab. Artificial life. Artificial human life. After producing artificial animal life, now humanity is trying to produce artificial human life and even to change the DNA so that we could have perfect children. Does this not sound like someone whom we killed in 1945 and who tried to have power and control over the whole world in his madness? Now, I don't want to make you sad because I know that there is not much we can do about this. I don't know of anybody in our church community who is trying to produce artificial human life in a lab. But I'm telling you, <laughs> because we have to have a position and we have to be aware of what's going on and also what we could do at our personal life, in our personal life, at the level of our personal life, is to make sure that we are not falling ourselves into the temptation of trying to have power and control. Now, I'm not telling you not to go to doctors anymore. God forbid. <laughs> okay? I'm not telling you not to take medication anymore. Because I think that would be extreme. But I think we need to have some common sense about some things. As a priest, I see a lot of things. And it bothers me when I see humanity deciding to kill babies in the womb because we think that that's what we want to do. And on the other hand, at the, ex at the other extreme, 
doing brain surgery on people in their 90s after having a massive stroke with no hope for recovery. <laughs> but we do it because we can. Now, at any, about anything in life, if I can do it, it doesn't mean that I should do it. If I have the knowledge to do it, it doesn't mean that I should do it. It means that if God gave humanity knowledge, we should use that knowledge in communion with God. And we should ask ourselves, is this treatment towards life or towards death? Is this action towards life or towards death? God, what should I do? Because you know, in the end, I'm going to die. <laughs> But it's different, you know, when someone has young children and, you know, and a very good hope for recovery, then, of course, do all the treatments, you know, that could be done. But when someone, you know, is in his or her 90s and no real good hope, you know, for a good recovery, give glory to God and <laughs> let life be. I'm talking about this balance that we are called to live our life into. By the way, they say that a much better translation of the Hebrew word that is translated you know, in English with judgment, the judgment of God or the righteousness of God, in fact is balance. <laughs> the balance of God. God tries to bring everything into balance. We create imbalances. Let us try to remember as St. Paul says in the, in the end of today's epistle reading, that this life that was given to us belongs to God. And more than that, for us as Christians, especially as Orthodox Christians, this is the core belief of, of the Orthodox Church. The dwelling of God within humanity. God dwelling within me and deciding what is best for my life, and me offering myself to him to work together with him. As St. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.